Uh, welcome to EVTU e Sectional Program. I am Dr. Pandavi. Today I'll be resuming the session five of uh, uh, module four. This is to, for the subject uh, microcontroller 18EC46. Uh, this deals with AD51 timers and serial ports. So, so far uh, in module one to module four, we have covered uh, the 8051 timers and counters. Then under uh, 8051 serial communication, we have covered uh, the basics of uh, serial data communication, the RS-232 standard, and the nine pin RS-232 signals. So today's class, uh, we are going to cover the simple serial port programming in assembly and also C to transmit a message and also to receive the data serially. So this portion, we will divide it into two, two parts. One is uh, transmission of a message and then uh, a reception of a message uh, serially. And, and before we go for the transmission and reception, we will see what are all the things that have to be done. Okay. So we will be actually looking at uh, how do you enable the serial port and so on. So, so any programming before you start the peripheral, the serial uh, uh, peripheral, the serial communication peripheral, before you enable it, uh, we have to look at the special function registers associated with it. And uh, how do we configure these uh, special function registers? So the first special function register is SCON. And this SCON will tell us uh, how many start bits to use, how many stop bits to use, and the data bits. The data bits generally can be eight or nine. And the SBUF, this is a, a buffer register to hold uh, the data to be transmitted and also to receive the data when it is receiving uh, serially. Then we have the T mod and T con and IP and IE. Especially IP and IE are used when we are using interrupts. This comes in the next uh, module. So in this module, we'll be using S con, S buff, T mod and T con. So coming to the serial input and output. So when I'm talking about uh, data transmission, let us recap. If I have parallel IO, it will use the entire data bus. Then you have the serial IO, it uses only one data line. So the entire parallel data, the 8-bit data, has to be converted into a serial data, which is being transmitted one bit at a time. Before we transmit serially, we have to hold this data. This data is held in a register known as SBUF. SBUF is actually two physical registers, but it'll have the same address. So when I use SBUF, I can use SBUF as a destination register or as a source register. It will have the same address 99. So when I use it as a destination register, it can be used for transmission. And when I'm using it as a source register, that means SBUF already contains the data which was received serially. And uh, that serial data has been converted into parallel data and it has, kept, it has been kept in SBUF. So, uh, as I said, the SBUF is having uh, the same address 99H. One of the uh, SBUF, it will hold the data which is transmitted out. And in this case, SBUF is uh, acting as a destination register. From the accumulator A, you move to SBUF the data that you want to transmit out. So, this is only right. Okay, this uh, physical internal SBUF is only right. The other is read. So this uh, another register with the same name SBUF and the same address 99 is read only. And what does it contain? It contains the data received from external sources via the RXT pin. RXT pin is the receive pin. And once again, you have the register SCON and PCON for the communication and the data rates. So PCON also we will be using in the extra portion where we have to double the baud rate, etc. But at present, we use only S mod and S con. So we are using two registers. So S con and S buff. And in S con, we are using S mod bits. We will be explaining that. 
So what's the job of the SBUF register? How does it exactly work? So the moment you write a byte into SBUF, uh, the byte, uh, it will be framed with uh, a start bit and a stop bit. And it will be transferred via the TXT pin, the transmit pin. Remember for asynchronous data transfer, so the complete 8-bit data should have a start bit at one end and a stop bit at the other end. This complete framing is done by the SBUF register. Similarly, when it receives the data, it has to remove the start and stop bit. It has to eliminate the start and stop bit and convert it into a byte and it will be placed into SBUF. So how do you transmit the data? Uh, just uh, write the data into SBUF. And once uh, the data in SBUF is completely transmitted, SBUF becomes empty. And this empty thing is uh, designated by the TI, uh, the transmit interrupt becoming one. So TI is equal to one, and this indicates SBUF is empty. Whatever data has been written into SBUF has been transmitted. So what about reception? Reception is enabled only if REN bit in SCON is set to one, and whatever data is there on RXT pin will be put into the SBUF. And once you have uh, uh, RI uh, is set, after all the data has been received. So the data is received and it is kept in SBUF. And once it is in SBUF, it will indicate the data has been received. That is indicated by the RI flag. So this is an SBUF register. This SBUF register, as I said, uh, uh, there are it's a two it's a two registers. One is read only, and the other is write only. Write only is for transmission, serial transmission. Read only is for reception. So when that when you write a data into SBUF and TI is equal to one. TI, sorry, TI equal to zero, it starts transmitting. And once the transmission is complete, SBUF becomes empty and TI equal to one. Similarly, reception. Uh, reception is enabled by REN bit. And once the reception is enabled, the bits start coming on the RXT pin. And uh, once they come, they're received on the receive pin, RXT pin, they will be put in SBUF. And once SBUF is having valid data, complete it will set ri flag so ri flag is equal to one indicating that all the data has been received so this is a review how does it a serial work uh, for the serial port to work you have to transmit data at a particular uh, uh, baud rate and uh, the baud rate is generated by timer one working in moto that is auto reload so you need a clock and the clock is provided by uh, timer one and uh, you can have different baud rates for uh, synchronization. So we also have the SCON bit to be configured. So the SCON bit will uh, define what is the type of serial mode, what is the start bit, stop bits that is required. And uh, to transmit the data, as I said, the data is written to SBUF register. And as soon as the uh, data is moved to SBUF register, based on the SCON configuration, it is framed with the start bit and stop bits. The stop bits can be one or two bits. And what about the data? Start bit plus data. The data can be in eight bit data or a nine bit data. Suppose you include the parity and all, you have an extra bit. So that nine bit data, or you can have stop bit. Stop bit also can be one stop bit or two stop bit, depending on uh, uh, the SCON configuration. Then once the data transmission is complete, as I said, the, the TI, the transmit inter flag is set, indicating that uh, uh, the SBUF is empty. And now you can uh, write the next data into SBUF and the next byte of data can be serially transmitted. Similarly to receive, the SCON uh, register has the REN bit and the REN bit uh, and the required baud rate has to be set using timer one in mode two and the 8051 keeps checking the ri bit and once the uh, uh, data serial data on the rx uh, pin is loaded into sbuf register the ri is high and what are the ones ri is high the 8051 can read the value of sbuf so we had it as steps okay so first step is the clock has to be configured for the required baud rate. Now we'll see how to configure this clock. 
what are the registers. Second, I said the SCON register has to be configured for the serial mode start bit and all. And then uh, the step three, four and all uh, is written in the program. But before we write the program, we have to configure the registers. So we will check out how to configure the registers, especially step one and step two. Step one, we are talking about uh, setting the baud rate. Uh, step two is uh, selecting the required serial mode, the number of start bits, stop bits, etc. What are all the different uh, uh, configurations available? Then for transmitting the data, uh, writing the data into the SBUF, checking whether the transmission is complete, and again going back and uh, sending the second byte and all, uh, we will do it in the program. We will do it in the program. But first two steps uh, we have to check. So the first step is uh, the setting up the clock of the serial port. So the clock of the serial port has to be set up to generate the required baud rate. Uh, whether it is for transmission or reception, the baud rate has to be agreed upon. And this clock is uh, being generated using the internal clock and the timer one. So this is your internal crystal oscillator that is divided by 12. So you get the machine cycle frequency. And as soon as you select CL transmission, you have a UART, uh, that is Universal Asynchronous Receive Transmit. That's, that will divide it by 32. So uh, for the serial circuitry, automatically you get 28,800 hertz. This 28,800 hertz has to be further divided by the timer one in auto reload, uh, that is mode two, to get the baud rate. So how is the clock circuit to serial port? You use a internal crystal oscillator. It can be 11.0592 megahertz. And that is divided by 12 because uh, each 12 uh, clock cycles, crystal cycles will constitute one machine cycle. And that will be automatically divided by 32. That's the internal UART. So you get 28,800. Okay, from this 28,800 hertz, suppose I need a baud rate of 9,600. These are the standard baud rates. And these baud rates were uh, agreed upon by the uh, IBM manufacturers at IBM PC. So CEL communication was initially developed for computer to computer based, and the baud rates were decided by them. And for the IBM PCs, uh, the baud rates that you can select is something like 9,600. These are common baud rates, 4,800, 2,400, 1,200, and so on. So to get 9,600, here at this point, I have 28,800. This is being given to the timer. The timer will further divide this. Suppose uh, 9,600, uh, to get 9,600, uh, 28,800 has to be divided by 3. So if 28,800 is divided by 3, I get 9,600. Similarly, if this 28,800 is divided by 6, I get 4,800 and so on. So these are almost fixed. So for 9,600, uh, for the timer 1, in auto reload. For timer one in auto reload, the TH1 uh, should be having the initial value. The timer one should be uh, counting up to three values, uh, three clock cycles. So this clock frequency will be divided by three. So 28,800 will be divided by three. So to get by divide by three, I need a divide by three counter or a divide by three timer. And uh, for this divide by three timer, uh, the initial value will be minus three. Remember the timer counts up from initial value to FF. Mode two is eight bit mode. So it will count up to FF. So minus three will be FD. From FD, it will count up to FD, FE, uh, then FF, then roll over to zero. Once it rolls over to zero, zero, or the initial value, which is initial value again FD. It will count three cycles. It will count three cycles. So to get divide by three, I can enter minus three in, uh, uh, assembler directly and that minus 3 will be converted to FD. Similarly to get minus 6, just enter minus 6 directly, the initial count will be FF minus 6 plus 1. That will be or 256 minus 6, that is FA and so on. So let me recap, uh, let me recap. Uh, you have the crystal oscillator, now what are we talking about? We are talking about how to generate the clock for the serial port. Uh, such that I get the required baud rate. 
So the baud rates are uh, fixed. It can be 9,600, 1,200 or so on. So for the required baud rate, uh, internally, how is the circuitry? The circuit is this. You have a crystal oscillator. The crystal oscillator is automatically divided by 12. That constitutes a machine cycle that is given to the serial port. So the serial uh, communication peripheral that is there on the 8051, the serial communication peripheral that is there on the peripheral will automatically divide this uh, clock that is coming in here by 32. And uh, this is the clock that is initially available, 28,800. This is the maximum baud rate I can use. This is the maximum baud rate I can use. But uh, I have to have synchronization of the transmitter and the receiver. To have the synchronization about the transmitter and the receiver, the transmitter can be a, a IBM PC or any personal computer, and the receiver can be your 8051 or vice versa. So for this, you have to agree upon the baud rates. The standard baud rates are something like 9,600 to 1,200. So to get 9,600 baud rate from this 28,800, so this 28,800, if it is divided by three, I get 9,600 and so on and so on. So this is an example. Uh, this is a crystal frequency. And what is the THN value to get 9,600? As I said, uh, the machine cycle is uh, 11,000 uh, megahertz, 11 megahertz. Divide by 12, you get so much. And that is uh, divided by 32 in the UART. And that is given as a timer. And uh, the 28,300 divided by 3, I get 9,600. And uh, this division by 3, that is a minus 3, it has to be loaded in TH1. And then in hex value, that is FD. Similarly, if I divide it by 12, you get 2,400. And what has to be loaded in TH1? Minus 12. And so on. So this is the initial portion of setting the baud rate. So remember this uh, uh, setup. So crystal oscillator divided by 12, divided by 32. So that's your 28,800. And that has to be divided by the timer value. And that timer value will give me the desired baud rate. It will give me the desired baud rate. So then we have the SCON register. The SCON register uh, is loaded with the required serial mode, start, stop, bits, etc. So what are the contents of the SCON SFR? It's bit addressable. Bit addressable means each bit has an address. For example, the SM0, SM1 bit has the bit address 9F9E. Whereas the SCON register itself has the address 98. The SCON register has the address 98. And in the SCON register of 98, each bit has a separate address. And that separate address is known as a bit address. So for example, SM0. SM0 is the D7th bit. It is a D7th bit of SCON. So S, uh, SM0 is a D7th bit. The D0 bit is RI the receive interrupt. So the D0 bit is uh, RI. So I can use this as RI itself. So I can use this as RI itself, the name, or I can use it as SCON.0. You can use it as SCON.0. Or you can specify RI by the bit address. The bit address is 98. Similarly, I can use TI. That's your tra transmit interrupt. So I can use TI directly or I can use the bit address 99, or I can use the uh, register address as SCON.1. SCON.1 uh, represents the bit D1. It represents the bit D1, and so on. So it also has uh, the other conditions like RB8, TB8. Suppose I am transmitting nine bits of data. If you're transmitting nine bits of data into the SBUF, you can uh, write only eight bits. The ninth bit, the ninth bit I'll be specifying here. So depending on the ninth bit, the one or zero will be uh, put here. Suppose if it's a nine bit data transmission, then the SM0 and SM1, I should ensure that this is in a serial mode where it is transmitting nine bits. So nine bits of data will not be held in any register. So especially the SBUF accumulator are all eight bits. So the ninth bit uh, will be in TB8. So the TB8 represents the D8 or the ninth bit of data that has to be transmitted. Similarly, when it is receiving nine bits of data, 
the first eight bits uh, d0 to d7 will be put in s buff s buff but what about the ninth bit the ninth bit will be uh, put at rb8 so the rb8 will uh, specify the received ninth bit of data if the received ninth bit of data is zero this will be zero if the received ninth bit of data is one this will be one and once again you have receive enable once this ren equal to one the serial uh, uh, reception starts working so to enable the uh, uh, serial uh, receiver to start working we have to make ren equal to 1 then we have the mode bits uh, we'll come to this mode bits later the serial mode bits sm0 sm1 and sm2 so as i said this is just a recap sm0 sm1 specifies the mode of the serial io then sm2 it enables the multiprocessor mode so this is your sm2 this will enable the multiprocessor mode and uh, uh, ren uh, ren as i said uh, it will enable disable uh, reception and as i said uh, tb8 is the ninth bit that will be transmitted and rb8 the rb8 will be the ninth data bit that is received ninth data bit that is received then uh, let us recap about ti so here we also have seen sm0 sm1 the modes of serial io later in later slides i have the modes of uh, serial io in detail that has also been covered in uh, uh, earlier uh, module when I, when we were doing the architecture of 81 but just let us recap also so sm0 sm1 is the mode of serial io along with sm2 sm2 is for uh, multiprocessor communication or not and then ren is uh, receive enable disable tb8 tb in rb8 are the ninth bit of data that is being transmitted or received especially for nine bit data communication then uh, we have ti ri as i said uh, ti is a transmit interrupt flag this is set by hardware uh, when you receive uh, uh, the uh, stop bit okay and so that means you're finished uh, uh, transmission of all eight bits so it is cleared by software when a program writes a value to the serial port and uh, once you clock out all the bits of data from d0 to d7 you clock it out at the baud rate one bit at a time you send it out at the baud rate and once you are clocking it out remember it is uh, uh, serial in parallel out serial sorry parallel in serial out Parallel in means 8 bit of data you are sending at once and serially 1 bit at a time you are clocking out. You are clocking out at uh, what rate? At the baud rate out of the serial port. So once you do this and once everything is finished, when everything is finished, TI will be equal to 1. What happens? What happens if you write another byte to the serial port before the first byte was completely sent out? so the data would be jumbled so let us say you have sent one eight bit data only four bits of data d0 to d3 have been uh, transmitted before the completion uh, the user program writes uh, the next byte of data the old byte of data would have been lost and now uh, the baud rate will ensure that the next byte of data is being uh, sent out so in this way what will happen first byte of data you sent out four bits immediately after that you are sending uh, the second byte so the data that you receive will not be all eight bits of one byte it will be jumbled so be careful before you send out the second byte of data we have to see whether the first byte of data that we have written to s buff has been completely transmitted after it has been completely transmitted then only we have to write another byte you have to write another byte but before writing another byte how do you know when to write the another byte that is given by ti the transmit interrupt flag so the ti will uh, become one after it is completely empty so hence setting ti bit the 8051 lets the program know it has clocked out the last bit of the previous byte and now the program may assume that the serial port is free and ready to send the next byte so before it sends the next byte what the programmer generally does is ti is again uh, reset okay so what is the importance of ti flag by checking the ti flag we know whether or not the 8051 is ready to transfer another byte so ti e flag bit is set by 8051 itself when it finishes the data transfer 
So the 8051 knows when it has clogged out the last bit that was written into SBUF, that it is SBUF is empty, then the TI flag is set. And the programmer, before he writes another byte into the SBUF, the programmer, before he writes another byte into the SBUF, he should clear TI with the instruction clear TI. So what does this instruction clear TI do? Make TI equal to zero. So that now you write a new byte of data into SBUF to be transmitted. And as soon as you write the new data into SBUF and the clock is enabled, that the timer starts working, the clock is enabled. Uh, after the eight clock pulses have passed at the required baud rate, uh, the SBUF becomes empty. The SBUF becomes empty and the TI flag bit is raised. Okay. So there is one more concept that is if you write a byte into SBUF before the TI flag is raised, well, it is a loss of portion of the byte being transferred. As I said, you might have transferred only four bits or five bits of the uh, byte. And before you completely finish, another new data has been overwritten into SBUF. So you lose out uh, certain data bits. And especially at the receiver, there is no synchronization. Uh, the data will be jumbled. How do you check whether the TI bit? The TI bit uh, can be checked with this instruction, jump or no borrow TI excess. So you keep waiting here. If, as long as TI equal to zero, as long as it is not set, that is J and B, as long as TI is not set, you keep waiting here for this uh, uh, instruction. So, but this is a polling method. The 8051 has to suspend all its uh, uh, work and it has to keep checking TI. And once uh, TI is equal to one, it can continue the other program. Suppose the 8051 wants to do something else during this time. So instead of using uh, the instruction, you can use an interrupt. The TI anyway is the transmit interrupt. So you enable this interrupt uh, so that the 8051 will be interrupted. As soon as TI becomes one, uh, it'll 8051 is interrupted and you can go. This will be in the next uh, uh, module when we are covering the interrupts. But in this, uh, we are just using this instruction, which is the instruction J and B T I comma X X. Keep waiting as long as T I equal to zero. Then similarly, the receive interrupt flag. Okay, this is receive interrupt flag is uh, represented at the end of the eighth bit, that is, uh, or uh, as soon as you get the stop bit. So in the meantime, uh, you cannot read the S buff. So as soon as you get a valid data into SBUF, all eight bits have been received into the uh, SBUF, the RI is set. So what does RI equal to one specify? SBUF contains uh, serially received data. So SBUF has serially received data and the 8051 should read this SBUF. Okay, and uh, else if it doesn't read this SBUF, you lose the data. So this is your uh, RI value. So we saw what is SM0, SM1, what is SM2, multiprocessor mode, REN, receive, enable, TB8, RB8, uh, the ninth bit of data to be transmitted or received, TI, the importance of transmit flag, RI, the importance of receive flag. So this receive interrupt flag will specify that the S buff that you have uh, is containing uh, a valid 8-bit data. Okay, so then you also have a PCON register. In the PCON register, uh, some are reserved. 654 are reserved, don't write anything to this. And then uh, you have the SMOD bit. We'll be generally using SMOD bit. This SMOD bit is used to double the uh, baud rate. For example, if you have set the baud rate as 9600, but you want to double the baud rate, then a SMOD equal to one. You said as, as soon as you make it as mod equal to one, you need not have to again uh, redo the calculations. Uh, assume that uh, you are sending at 4,600. Now you have to double it to 9,600. So simple uh, that 4,800, whatever mode you have, keep the timer, everything as it is. So don't change the program, anything. So just go to peak on register, make the S mod equal to one. So as soon as you make the S mod equal to one, the baud rate is doubled. So one advantage is this in the serial transmission, for some part of the serial transmission, for some amount of time, I can have at the regular baud rate. Suddenly you want to increase the speed of serial transmission. So if you want, you want to increase the speed of the transmission and basically want to double the rate of serial transmission, then you just make that S mod equal to one. 
in the peak on register. If you make S mod equal to one, whatever existing baud rate is there, it is 4,800, it immediately becomes 9,600. If it is 1,200 baud rate, immediately it will become 2,400. So the existing baud rate is doubled. You need not have to reload the timer again, uh, the S mod register and all, nothing. Everything is kept uh, constant, just in peak on register, S mod is made one. As soon as you make it S mod equal to one, existing baud rate is just doubled. Then you have others, uh, general purpose flag, GF0, GF1, uh, power down mode, idle mode and all. So this, oh, we are not using much in this particular uh, uh, session. Then we also had uh, uh, the serial data transmission modes. I just touched upon SM0 and SM1. So this SM0 and SM1 are serial mode bits. So this serial mode bits, uh, you, there are two bits. So automatically you will have four uh, modes of uh, serial data transmission. The serial modes are SM0 and SM1. The two bits will have four uh, combinations. Mode 0, mode 1, mode 2, mode 3. So mode zero is your normal uh, shift register operation wherein uh, the baud rate will be crystal frequency by 12. That is your maximum uh, uh, baud rate around 28,800. Uh, whereas uh, the other modes, mode one, two, three, they will be divided by 12 further. You have the UART coming into picture. The UART will uh, further divide it by 12. And not only that, uh, the difference between the other three modes is uh, in mode one, uh, you can have variable baud rate. And we have seen the variable baud rate. The timer one can be used it. Suppose I load timer one with minus three. So uh, after dividing by 32 by UART, uh, this will be once again uh, uh, divided by three. So the 28,800 will be divided by three and you get 9,600. Similarly, divide by six, etc. So the baud rate in mode one is variable. And that is set by timer one and mode two. Then you have uh, mode two, that is a nine bit uh, uh, UART. So mode two and mode three are nine bit data transmissions. Okay, uh, in uh, mode two, it is uh, crystal frequency divided by 12. Uh, if I say S mod bit, uh, that S mod bit is in peak on register. And that S mod bit equal to one, the baud rate is doubled. Uh, that will become uh, crystal frequency by 12. Is S mod equal to zero? This will be crystal frequency divided by uh, 64. So uh, this is about nine mode two. And again, mode three, mode three is similar to mode one. Only thing is uh, uh, it is a nine bit data transmission. Mode one is eight bit data transmission. Mode three is nine bit data transmission. And here in mode one, you can, uh, the baud rate is variable. It is set by timer one. And uh, in uh, mode two is uh, similar to mode zero. Mode zero is eight bit uh, shift register, eight bit data transmission with a fixed baud rate. The baud rate is just crystal frequency by 12. The other three modes use the UART. As soon as you use the UART, it will be divided by 32. So mode two and three are nine bit uh, data transmissions. And in mode three, again, we have variable. So the rest of the programming, we'll be using only mode one. We'll be using mode one, wherein we have eight bit UART. You have eight bit UART. And you would also be using the baud rate. You have a variable uh, baud rate. So let us see the procedure to program the 8051 to transfer uh, data serially. So first is, as I said, we have to set the baud rate. To set the baud rate, we have to initialize the T mod. So the T mod has to be used. You can use either timer one or timer two. Suppose I'm using timer one in mode two, uh, timer one in mode two, uh, it'll be 20 H. Uh, so the T mod will be 20 H for timer one in mode two, which is used for generating the uh, clock to the serial peripheral. And uh, for the clock to the serial peripheral, uh, timer one is auto reload you need not have to set the initial value again and again. So blindly remember, uh, when I'm using uh, uh, the mode one, eight bit UART, uh, it is uh, the baud rate is set by the timer one, it is variable. The input clock is divided by 12. 
and is further divided by 32 by u watt and the rest of the baud rate is uh, set by the timer one divide by 3 etc so first for that we need to initialize the timer uh, timer one and uh, timer one it is fixed timer one in mode two so the t mode is 20h this is fixed but the value of th1 the value of th1 that you put in timer one require it depends on the required baud rate and this value is also almost fixed because the baud rates are fixed for 9600 the baud rate th1 is minus 3 for 4800 it is minus 6 and it goes on so for 1200 it is minus 12 and so on so then we next is we have to initialize the scon register scon register is also fixed uh, it is 50h we are using uh, one stat bit uh, and uh, eight bit data and one stop bit okay and this is serial mode one so as i said this is your uh, serial mode one sm0 sm1 uh, 0 01 that is serial mode one so we use uh, uh, 50h for serial mode one and then eight bit data we are using it's not nice serial mode one is automatically eight bit data and we have one start and stop bit. So once you start the timer, so timer is started by TR1 equal to 1. Once you start the timer 1, then what will happen? The clock is generated, the baud rate is generated, and that is given to the uh, uh, serial port. That is clear serial port. And we also have to clear the TI flag by chance. The transmit inter flag is already set. We are talking about transferring, transmitting the data. So for transmitting the data, the TI flag is important. After it finishes the uh, transmission, it, the TI flag is sent. So initially, your programmer has to clear it. So let us clear the TI flag. Then uh, move the 8-bit data to be transmitted into the SBUF register. So as soon as you move the uh, data into the SBUF register, it will be framed uh, by the start bit and stop bits. And as the timer is already there, as the serial clock is ticking, the data is sent one bit at a time onto the serial TXT line. And as soon as the complete 8-bit uh, data is uh, uh, transmitted, as soon as the complete 8-bit data is transmitted, the TI flag is set. Okay, the TI flag is set. It indicates that the complete transmission is over. And if you have to transmit another 8-bit data, repeat it from step 5. Again, in repeat it from step 5, you have to clear the TI flag. And again, uh, uh, TI flag is set here to indicate it has finished transmission. So come back here, clear the TI flag, move the next 8-bit dev data to be transmitted. And again, keep waiting till the transmission is over. Then again, go back, clear TI, uh, move in a fresh data, wait TI is set. So once the transmission is over, TI will be set. So it's, it's a procedure till you finish uh, the complete uh, uh, data transmission one byte at a time so this is an example wherein we are transmitting uh, the letter h serially at 9600 baud continuously so it's a continuous uh, transmission uh, it's at 9600 baud so once again here the t mode register uh, you specify it as 20h so it is timer one and mode two then scon register i said it is 50h so t mode 20 scon 50 let us see you expand 50 and what it shows 50 is 0101 0, 1, that is 5 and the 0 is four zeros so this four zeros indicate uh, ri is cleared uh, ti is also cleared the receive interrupt is clear the transmit interrupt is also cleared then uh, since we are not uh, uh, using uh, nine bit data the rb8 and tb8 are not used these are the nine bit of data being transmitted and received so make them as zero zero since or don't care but it is zero zero then uh, uh, we are not using the uh, suppose uh, i make ren equal to one in the same program i am enabling reception so i can have both uh, reception as well as transmission so i need not have to have a separate uh, scon uh, configuration for receive for receive and transmit, I can have the same SCON of 50H. So in 50H, REN is automatically 1. So if there is some data on RXD, and automatically it will be in SBUF. That's a different physical register. Then I do not have multiprocessor communication. So since multiprocessor communication is not there, SM2 can become 0. Then it is mode 1. So mode 1 will use the timer 1. 
and uh, so this is serial mode zero one, and it's an eight bit data transmission, and it's an eight bit data transmission. So you, whether you remember this or not, uh, blindly remember if SCON is fifty H, if SCON is fifty H, this is serial mode one, the serial mode one, wherein it requires a timer uh, one, it requires a timer one in mode two. So timer one in mode two is twenty H. This will set the required baud rate. It will set the required baud rate. For the required baud rate, we have to load th1. But we are using timer one, uh, mode two, uh, for this uh, serial mode one. And the rest of them you can be zero. And uh, the REN pin you make it one so that uh, uh, this SCON 50H can be used for both uh, transmission as well as uh, reception. So this is a simple ALP program. This is a simple ALP program uh, to transfer a letter H uh, serially. So uh, as I said, T mod is 20H. So it's a timer one, mode two, auto reload. TH1 should be loaded with the number for the required baud rate. Say here, the question is 9,600 baud. So for 9,600 baud, I should divide it by three. So TH1 is minus three and SCON is 50H, then start the timer. So once you start the timer, the serial peripheral is enabled. The serial peripheral is enabled. Then whatever uh, is to be transmitted, so H has to be transmitted. H, you put it in single quote. If you put H in single quote, the ASCII value of H, the ASCII value of H, this is hash is immediate value. The ASCII value of H is put in SBUF register. Uh, as soon as the data to be transmitted is uh, uh, moved into the SBUF register, automatically uh, this uh, data will be framed with a start bit and stop bit. It will be framed with a start bit and a stop bit and the transmission starts. Uh, since uh, TR1, the timer is also there. The inter internal crystal frequency is already there. So that uh, baud rate is generated and uh, the SBUF keeps transmitting. Once SBUF is empty, so one bit at a time from SBUF's D0 is put up, then D1, D2. And once all the D7 bits and the stop bit are being transmitted, the TI will be set. So till then, the program has to just wait. You keep checking J and B T1 wait. So as long as T1 um, is zero, you keep waiting. Jump on no borrow. So as soon as there is no borrow, that is T1 is not set, you keep waiting. As soon as T1 is set, as soon as T1 is set, T1 equal to one. Uh, this is not satisfied. It will go to the next instruction, which is the next instruction. Clear TI clear the interrupt flag so that S jump again. Again, you get in one more H into S buff and you wait till TI is uh, one. And once TI is one, uh, you clear TI so that uh, you can have the next transmission. Clear TI for the next transmission and S jump again. Suppose you forget to clear TI here. You forget to clear, so forget clear. And you just say S jump again. You put some other value, but since TI equal to one, it will not wait. It will immediately come out and it will do the next operation. So be careful. Uh, we have to ensure that TI is cleared after uh, you come out of this uh, J and B TI equal to wait. So this is standard procedure. T mod is 20H, timer one mode two. Then uh, for 9600 baud, uh, the TH one, the initial value of a timer one is minus three, then SCON is 50H. This ensures uh, serial mode one and eight bit data transmission. Then start the timer so that the baud rate is given. The baud rate is being generated. Then move into SBUF, the eight bit data that you have to transmit. And uh, you keep waiting till the transmission is over. After that, you clear the TI and SGM2 again. You keep doing this. So as I said, uh, this is your crystal oscillator. This is divided by 12 and mode one, two, three. In mode zero, this divide by UART is not there. Crystal oscillator divided by 12 is generally the baud rate. Then you start the timer TR1 so that uh, once you start the timer, uh, this will be working in auto reload. TH1 you have loaded with minus three. 
so the timer will count to three. So whatever value you are getting, you are dividing by three. And uh, the equations for this is the baud rate that you get is the crystal frequency divided by twelve, then further divided by thirty-two, then further divided by the timer value. So what is the timer value? Two fifty. That is the maximum value minus th one. So if th one is uh, uh so uh, recap i mean rearrange uh, so this will be going towards this side baud rate comes down so 256 minus th1 is here 256 you bring it to the other side and you do it so for a baud rate of 9600 th1 is 256 minus this or th1 is 256 minus 3 or it is 253 that is fth either you can remember this way using the formula or uh, as i said uh, uh, you can just remember this crystal frequency is something like 11502 megahertz that is divided by 12 divided by 32 you get something like 28800 here so that 28800 you divided by 3 divide by 3 you get 9600 so that divide by 3 is known as minus 3 Similarly, divide by six, uh, twenty-eight thousand eight hundred divided by six, you get four thousand eight hundred. So those are the fixed uh, table that you can uh, remember. So this is the C program. So for every program that we have here, so this is the ALP wherein we are using the move instruction, then the set B, and then the J and B, the clear TI, the S jump, etc. So oh, in the C program, oh, we will be using uh, uh, the standard uh, inclusions. The standard inclusion is uh, include register fifty one dot h so that it will uh, identify all t h one t i r i etc. All the ones which are specific to eighty fifty one that is given by include register fifty one dot h. Then void main any C program you have this void main. Then T mod is equal to zero x twenty. That's your uh, initial uh, uh, value. Then T H uh, one is minus three. So you can write T H one equal to minus three or zero x f d. Zero x specify it is hexadecimal. Similarly, zero x twenty specifies it is hexadecimal. Then S con is zero x fifty. And T R one equal to one. T R one equal to one is time of one. So go back here. Uh, so you have this uh, uh, mu t mod twenty h mu t h one is minus three mu s con equal to fifty h. So what we can do is, uh, uh, so what we can do is uh, that ALP program and C program I can have side by side. So this is your ALP program mu t mod equal to hash twenty. In C we write t mod equal to zero x twenty. Then mu t h one is minus three hash minus three that we can write as t h one equal to zero x f t zero x f t is the two's complement of uh, minus three. Then mu s con equal to fifty h mu s con equal to fifty h that is nothing but s con equal to zero x fifty in C and everything you have to have the semicolon. Then set b t r one so t r one equal to one. And then uh, this is a uh, continuous loop again. S jump to again. So this continuous loop is written by while one. So while one, uh, you have a continuous loop. In this while one, uh, first uh, uh, the S buff is moved with H. Move S buff with hash H. Similarly, S buff is equal to H is in a single quote. Then wait till. T J N B T I wait. So while T I equal to equal to zero, while T I equal to zero, you keep waiting here. So while T I equal to equal to zero, wait. Then clear T I. T I equal to zero. Clear T or T I equal to zero. Then S jump again. So this S jump again is while one. So whenever you have an infinite loop again and S jump again in assembly program. This will be your while one loop, so wherein you have a start to end, and this is your end of. Uh, uh, then we have the next program, wherein uh, this program talks about uh, reading a port P1 data, and transferring this data seriously. Serially, once again the baud rate is four thousand eight hundred. 
previously it was a very simple program wherein we had a, a letter that is H. It can be A or any letter that has been uh, transmitted continuously. In this case, uh, we are reading the port P1 data and we are transmitting this uh, continuously at uh, the baud rate that was 9600. Here the baud rate is 4800. So as such, uh, this is a block schematic. So this is an 8-bit data. Previously, that 8-bit data was H, uh, E, S, uh, some letters. But here, this 8-bit data is the data that is uh, obtained at port P1. This is the 8-bit data that is obtained at port P1. And this 8-bit data has to be read in. You have to read in the port bin, 8-bit data. It has to be read in, and it has to be transmitted serially on the TX bin. So if it has to be transmitted on the TX bin, you have a start bit and a stop bit. In between, you have the 8-bit data. So the TX bin is a pin 3.1. And the total schematic is this. Read the 8-bit data from P1. Put it in SBUF. So as soon as you put it in SBUF, it starts uh, transmitting it. And once the transmission is complete, the TI, the transmit inter becomes 1. So once the transmit TI is equal to 1, uh, you clear TI, and then again get the next 8-bit data from port P1, and that again you keep transmitting. So it's an infinite loop wherein you get the data from port 1 and transmit. So before you get the data from port 1, put it in SBUF, and then start the transmission, uh, once again we have uh, uh, the initial loading. The initial loading is uh, SCON equal to 50H, uh, that's your timer 1, uh, in mode 2 continuously with the baud rate and the baud rate here is 4800. So this is your algorithm. Make P1 as input port. So you have to make P1 as an input port so that you can read the 8-bit data. Then initialize for serial transmission. So for initialization of serial transmission, we have the registers. Uh, the T mode register. The T mode register is 20H for timer 2. Then SCON is 50. Then TH1, now you have to load it for 4,800. And TR1, start the timer 1. If TR1 equal to 1, the timer is started and uh, you get the other thing. So read the data from P1 port. Send the P1 data to SBUF for serial transmission. Wait till TI is set. That is the serial transmission is complete. Then just clear TI and repeat from 3. That is repeat from 3 means get the data again from port P1. And whatever data you have from port P1, send it to SBUF for serial transmission. Wait till that complete is, transmission is complete, then clear and repeat. So this is a uh, ALP for it. T mod is 20. And for 4,800, TH1 is minus 6. Remember for 9,600, uh, it was TH1 was minus 3. For 4,800, it is minus 6. So SCON is 50, that is serial mode 1, etc. Then P1 is input port. You have to configure it as input port or input IE or 1. So all the pins are configured as input, that means FF. So if you want to configure it as output port, PN output is O or 0. So more P1 will be hash 00, zero will be output port. Here I'm reading in the data. So here you're reading in the data from P1. So before you read the data from P1, this is compulsory to configure the port P1 as input port. So to configure the port P1 equal as input mode, move P1 with hash 0FF. Then start the timer. So as soon as you start the timer, the baud rate will start being uh, at the required baud rate. The clock is given to the serial peripheral and uh, the data starts moving out. So get the data from P1, move P1 to accumulator A. From A, you send it to SBUF. So as soon as you send it to SBUF, it starts. Then uh, keep checking T1, uh, JNB, T1, keep checking. Then as soon as T1 has become one, that means transmission is complete. Clear TI, clear the transmit interrupt flag, and jump repeat, you keep repeating. That is getting the uh, data from P1, then move the data to SBUF, uh, keep waiting till TI1 becomes zero. This is TI. Um, JNB, TI, comma, wait, then clear TI, then S jump, repeat. So uh, before you do the main program, you have the initialization. What is the initialization? T mod equal to zero, zero. T mod equal to zero. T mod equal to 20H. TH1 is minus six. SCON is 50H. P1 is zero FF as the input port. 
start the timer and move T1 to 8 and you keep uh, doing this. This is the corresponding uh, C program. And the corresponding C program, once again, uh, we have include uh, register 51.h, the, the uh, registers enabling void main. And then I'm using one uh, uh, instead of accumulator. I can't use accumulator here. Uh, we can use a variable, and that variable should contain 8 bits, so unsigned char. So unsigned char x, then p1 is equal to 0xff. So uh, p1 equal to 0ff, that is configuring p1 as input port. So p1 equal to 0xff, and the other values, t mode is 20, th1 is minus 6, scon is 50, p. then uh, so this is t mode is 20, and then minus 6, th1 is minus 6, is uh, th1 is 0xfa, that is 256 minus 6. So 256 minus 6 is 250, and 250 is fa. Then S con is 50. Then start the timer. That is set B TR1. Set B TR1 is TR1 equal to 1. And it's a continuous loop. It's a repeat. A repeat and jump repeat. So for the continuous loop, you have while 1. While 1, uh, X is equal to P1. That is read P1. Uh, X is equal to P1. Read the P1 one. Whatever value is there in X, move it to S buff. Move it to S buff. So that the serial transmission becomes while ti equal to zero as long as ti the transmit interrupt equal to zero you keep waiting and that is you wait till serial transmission is over as soon as ti becomes one you come out of the while loop it while loop gets exited and here immediately ti equal to one should be made ti equal to zero you have to clear ti for the next transmission so again next transmission this is an infinite loop P1 is put, port 1 contents are put into X, the X contents are put into S buff, the X contents are push, put into S buff, and while TI equal to equal to 0. So as long as wait till the transmission is over, and after the transmission is over, make TI equal to 0, so that you enable for the next transmission, and you keep repeating it. Okay, so, so today's class, uh, we have... Uh, uh, done a little bit uh, uh, about the uh, serial transmission and uh, uh, the setting of the baud rate and uh, uh, the uh, setting of the baud rate and uh, the S con register, uh, the S mod register, etc. Okay, in next class uh, we will be uh, doing a little bit uh, complicated uh, programs about uh, the serial transmission, little complicated programs of the serial transmission. And uh, today we did a simple programs, uh, just transmitting one letter T, and the other one was uh, reading in the port uh, content and uh, transmitting it. Uh, the next class we will do a little bit more complicated uh, uh, programs in transmission, and uh, serial reception programs has to be done. Serial reception is slightly different concepts are there. So we have to use the REN bit and RI receive interrupt flag. And how do you do with the serial uh, reception? Once again, you start with simple programs and they do it. And we also will end up with uh, uh, going through a few old uh, question paper uh, problems. As I said, this 8051 is a very old subject. So a few old uh, question paper problems on uh, uh, your uh, uh, timers and serial. I'll be complicating in the next uh, session. So session six next week will be the last, wherein uh, we will be covering, uh, uh, I will recap a serial transmission a little bit with a complicated program, uh, one or two. And later we will uh, start with the serial reception, the serial reception, the steps behind serial reception, and we will end up with the uh, old question paper uh, problems. Thank you.